Okay, this video is to talk about removing the swirl valves from a stacked Ram Eco Diesel intake manifold. Um, at least on this truck, the situation was I'm trying to deal with a coolant leak underneath the intake manifold. So the customer requested that I install a new intake manifold in the process and also wanted to see if I can remove the swirl valves since with this truck being deleted before I got to it, um, there's these swirl valves, there's no use for them. The computer doesn't actuate them anymore. But in order to remove them, and you can see I already have them removed on this side, what you have to do is remove the, the electrical motor first. So this sits in the intake valley of the engine. Uh, there's three T25 torque screws. So you undo that, the motor pulls away. Now you can see the gear that motor actuates, and that in turn moves the flaps which reduces or cuts off flow to uh, one intake valve per cylinder. Now to remove these flaps, you have to remove the shaft. And to remove the shaft, you have to remove this position sensor at the end. So that's position sensor in my hand. It bolts like that. There's two, um, what are they, T10 torque screws that hold them in place. And it comes right off. Um, it's magnetic, so there's nothing that physically touches or connects to this position sensor. Um, and you can see there's the magnet inside that the sensor reads. So now you have to remove the uh, sh shaft, and I find a pair of side cutters works really well. And you grab it, and you just kind of slowly do that motion to pull it straight out. So, let me see if I can pull it out by hand. No, not yet. Ow. So, we're just going to keep doing that. Okay, now, now it's at the point where I can pull it out by hand. So, pulls out like that. Now we have to remove the intake gasket that's in place here. Being a little clumsy about this. Okay, so removing the uh, intake manifold gasket. Very carefully and slowly. And I want to point out, so here, here's the valve. Now if I lift it, you can see it moves these two plastic pieces right here. And you want to be careful not to lose them. So I'm going to pull it out. And set it down. And they just slide right off and pop back in place. They are held in place in that groove there. There the other one. And then with the intake manifold back down, or the uh, gasket in place, firmly pressed in place, that will hold these um, where they should be. Now, with this bolted down to the engine, these plastic pieces are not going anywhere. Uh, one point of concern I do have for doing this is that if someone removes the intake manifold in the future, I'd be concerned about this intake gasket sticking to the cylinder head and then these plastic pieces dropping, uh, maybe into an intake runner of the engine. But to be honest, every time I remove an eco diesel uh, intake manifold, the intake gasket always sticks in place to the uh, intake manifold. So you can see here's an old one. You can see how caked up it is with soot. But, and I've already been kind of working with this one a little bit, just experimenting with different techniques for removing the uh, swirl valves. You can see how caked up it is with soot inside. But yeah, so anyway, my point is, is that the intake gasket always sticks to the manifold when you remove it, an old one. So I think the likelihood of these plastic pieces being dropped or lost are pretty low. 
But that being the case, it is smart to use an epoxy or something to firmly lock these little plastic pieces in place. So that's something to think about if you're doing that. So again, they just pop right out. Uh, this one right here is what the gear actually actuates. Um, this mechanism is, I mean, it's pretty much molded into the manifold, so this is not going anywhere. So at the tip of my finger, that uh, beige plastic piece, that, that's going to stay in place and that's not going anywhere. But yeah, that's basically the idea of removing the uh, swirl valves. And you certainly want to remove or reinstall the uh, position sen sensor at both ends. So one right there, and there's one right here as well. Um, because as you can imagine, this tur this manifold is being pressurized by the turbocharger, you know, up to, you know, PSI in the 30s, about the same as your tire. So you can't have, if you didn't reinstall these, um, you'd obviously have a, a major boost leak right here, and that would be un unacceptable. So that is something to consider. But yeah, I hope that uh, gives you an idea of how to do that and help somebody out who's in the same position.